everyone, Lisa here again. I hope you can join me today for a fun little loose painting. Uh, and what I'll do towards the end is just show you how you can start off really loose and free and add in some form at the end and make it into something great and have fun along the way. Let's get creative. Now you really want to wet the page for this one. And work quite quickly, so use a larger brush. You want to be able to have tiny bits of dry paper in weird shapes. Don't worry about the shapes, just ensure that some of the page is not wet. Now I'm just mixing up um, a colour. I, it's so old that I can't even remember the name of it, but I would assume it would be a permanent rose or an alizarin crimson or a magenta or something like that. I'm not really focused on colour with this. As you can see, I've used a smaller brush, but I'm just laying down abstract, loose, flowery shapes into the wet paper and really making it up as I go. But if you don't feel that you can do this, I would suggest getting some flowers as reference or a photograph you've taken of flowers. But the main thing is, if you're using reference, your brain tends to make you want to paint more like what it's taking in, the information it's taking in. So if you can get to a stage where you can imagine a flower, it doesn't have to be a realistic flower, but because I'm just making this up, my brain isn't limited to looking at a reference picture and trying to copy it. This is a really good thing to do if you want to be free and loose and just focus on the brush strokes, how much water you have, how much color you, you throw down and not too much about the shape of the flower, if that petal looks weird or not, because we are gonna work over it a little bit at the end. I'm just adding in a little bit of a fluorescent light bright pink out of a set that I purchased at Kmart, um, which I'll put up here. And to play around with watercolour, you don't want to go out and have to buy a whole lot of expensive tubes of paint. If you're not sure you like doing watercolour or you know that you haven't got the confidence that you wish to do paintings on expensive pieces of paper and, and using more expensive paint, um, I would suggest going and just buying a nice palette or pan of colour. This is a pink out of a set that I purchased at Kmart and it's now just, it's $10. And the colours are vibrant, they run well in water. Uh, and so it's, it's good enough, very much so, for you to play around with and to learn techniques so that you can improve and then you can jump up to perhaps a more heavily pigmented paint. So now I'm just going to introduce a second colour and flicking at the paint down, I tap it onto my finger, the brush, and that just blobs paint down where I don't have any control. And for me, because I'm a very experienced painter in keeping things in realistic shapes, I find doing this helps me keep loose when I'm painting. Try at this stage not to envision what the finished flower will look like. I'm just adding some darkness because I know that's where I want the centre of the flowers to be. But I'm not really heavily concerned with the shape of every petal and the overall shapes of the flowers. Uh, this is probably a hard thing for you to do because your brain always wants you to, you know, get an idea of the finished thing, how it's going to look. In the pan set here from Kmart, um, I just love the greens, the variety of greens. They've got nice light, mid and dark and cool and warm greens. So that's why I'm going to use it. I've just sprayed it with water. And now with your greens, you're going to start outlining the petals. So this is the point where if you need a reference picture, you make sure that you're happy with the shape, the outline shape that the flowers will make on the page. I'm still winging it because I just like the thought of plodding along. Um, but yes, you may want to have a specific shape of your petals 
in mind a reference like you know maybe like is it a hibiscus kind of pedal or is it a more of a frangipani pointed pedal um the best thing for me to do is just make flowers up i don't try and emulate any particular type of flower uh, i just like to do this sort of soft curved end shape so I'm starting off with light green and now here you can see that I'm adding in those deeper greens because I'm happy with the shape that I've created and I'm ready to sort of put some more strength in there because the darkness of the green is actually making the soft petal colour jump forward. Now I'm not going to do too much more to it with the background of green. I just want an indication of what the flowers are. And you can see here I've got a lot of softness in my green background. So it's really not descriptive other than its background. So the reason is because now I'm going to do a little outlining with my lovely coppery pen. Uh, I'll put the image up. And this is why at the end you can make something that's quite abstract into something more formal. Using pen and or you could even just be using a watercolour pencil. It, it's light and soft. It doesn't distract from the abstract feeling because your lines can be kept really loose and still to the point of really being rather abstract, but it just gives you a little bit more definition of shape. So I hope you enjoyed that and if you have any questions just leave a comment below and I will definitely get back to you. Okay, have a lovely week and I shall see you again for our date next Friday. Bye.